Hey friends, it's Lauren Taylor. Thanks for joining me back in my craft room. And I'm sharing today how I use the winter mug and lots of other products to make a graduation shaker square card. So I have my die cuts here. You can see that I'm using the new graduation mug additions for quite a few elements on this shaker card. I'm also using the congrats hot foiled with some pastel satin hot foil and the die to cut around the sentiment. I also have die cut the wonky stitch square in the largest size onto some white cardstock and I'm going to be using the new layered graduation stencils to create a fun background. So I know that I want to use A and B with some Distress Oxide inks and I'm going to be starting with tumbled glass to be my graduation caps or the mortarboards for my card. So I'm going to just line that stencil up about centered on top of my wonky stitched square and I have a magnetic glass mat just to help keep things in place while I'm using my Distress Oxide. Side. The first color I'm using is tumbled glass. Most of the die cuts that I have done for this card preparation were kind of a soft blue, soft mint color. So I thought this tumbled glass would go really well with the die cuts. I'm using my A stencil to help me line up my B stencil onto the background since this is not a 6x6 six six piece of paper. It's a little harder to line things up, but I found that if you use the stencil on top of the one that you want to lay down, you can kind of line up the images pretty, pretty well. And then I'm using my magnets to hold that second stencil in place. So I use scattered straw as the second color on the B stencil. And then I have some gold stencil paste that I'm using through the C stencil, which has the details for the mortar board, the little tassel, and tying around the little yellow diplomas. I love a good stencil reveal. So here is what our background looks like after applying all three of those layered stencils. And I'm going to go ahead and set it aside to dry. My next step is going to be assembling the shaker part of this little square card. So I'm going to grab my mug pieces as well as my little confetti that I die cut to be inside of my shaker. I'm also going to use the new aqua shimmer confetti to be my shaker. And I also die cut a little shooting star stirring stick out of some different types of cardstock. So I will be assembling all that together. I'm cutting a piece of acetate to be on my the front of my shaker because we need a little acetate to keep all of our shaker bits inside and I cut it to be just slightly larger than the rectangle that I die cut to create the window. Now I would recommend um, switching some things around as I was getting my acetate ready to be glued to the back side of my mug in the shaker. I forgot to glue that rectangle that I die cut to to the extra white cardstock mug. I wanted the same color, like colored and textured cardstock that I'm using for my mug to be in the back side of my shaker window. And obviously it's much easier to glue that down when you just lay those two mugs together and you can line up the rectangle in the opening to glue to the, you know, the back mug. Um, but I was too excited and I glued my acetate down before I realized that I needed to do that. And you'll notice me in a little bit here kind of going, oh wait, I missed a step. So I have my acetate adhered to the back of my mug that will be on the front of my shaker, just using some 1 8 of an inch double-sided adhesive tape. I'm taking the little die cut of the liquid that would be inside of my mug and I want it to look kind of like coffee or tea. So I'm just grabbing some brown um, Ohuhu alcohol art markers to color in that little piece and using some wet glue, I'm just gonna glue that to the inside of my mug and I'm gonna line it up with the opening slot that is die cut from the mug die. So now that the front of my card or my shaker is done, I know that I want to add in my little stirring stick, but I didn't want the stick to show in the shaker. So I'm gluing it together. I have a yellow star, kind of a pastel aqua colored, a piece of vellum 
and also a piece of vellum with some gold details that I'm layering with the yellow star just so it has kind of a pastel soft look um, as well as you know some metallic touches this card has a lot of shine on it and I'm going to figure out that I want the stirring stick to kind of be at an angle so it looks like the star is kind of shooting across the top side of my mug and I glued that to adhere to the coffee or the tea that's inside the mug and I trimmed off the excess of that stirring stick that would have shown through the window and this is when I'm realizing that I forgot to glue my little rectangle piece down to my back side of my shaker but that's okay I'm going to show you how you can fix that I'm grabbing a piece of repositionable tape and just kind of folding it in on itself so it's sticky on both sides and I'm sticking it to the back of the acetate window so that it lines up as well as I can uh, through that opening. I added the wet glue to the piece that I'm gluing to my back side of my shaker and then I'll slowly pull it apart and so that way that piece is now adhered to the back of my shaker and then I'll pull off that repositionable tape in a little bit and it should line up pretty perfectly. I'm taking some thin foam strips. These are about of an eighth of an inch wide and I'm going around my rectangle piece that I glued to the back of my shaker and I'm doing my very best to make sure that my foam won't stick out past the edges of my die cut and I needed a second piece so when making a shaker and adhering a second piece of uh, foam adhesive you want to make sure it's nice and snug to the piece that's already on the card because you don't want to risk any of your shaker pieces falling out of your little well that you made for the shaker bits. So now I'm going to poke all of those little yellow confetti pieces that I die cut from the graduation mug editions die set as well as the ones that I did out of this kind of teal sparkle cardstock. I'm also going to open up the confetti and I will place some of those inside of my shaker well as well. And once I have all of those in, I'm going to use my Misty to help me glue them together. So just making sure everything is as flat as can be with all of my different shaker bits. And then I'm going to line the back of my shaker to be in the corner of my Misty. And then I will line up the front of my shaker in that same corner to do my best to get those to line up perfectly. I realized that I forgot to add some additional foam adhesive in the parts where there wasn't a shaker like on the bottom of my mug, the top of my mug, and even the handle. So I'm just going to tuck in some more foam adhesive so I could create some stability in my shaker card. So once all three of those pieces are added, there's a nice secure little sandwich of this mug and my shaker bits inside. I'm going to decorate my shaker window with an apostrophe to three for the year 2023. I just cut part of the one that I die cut, the one, two, three. So that little part of the one makes the apostrophe. And then I have two, three for the year 2023. Uh, definitely can change up the year, um, which is great about this die set. There's a number zero through nine. So no matter what year you want to add to your graduation cards, you have lots of options. And I didn't want to try to fit 2023 into my window. So that's why I just did a little apostrophe to three. And I'm going to put a clear block on top of those and let them dry because I did use a wet adhesive to glue those down onto acetate. And it takes a little bit of time for those to really stick down. So while that's drying, I'm going to assemble the other die cut pieces from the graduation mug editions die set. I have my little mortar board. I die cut one part of it out of some teal cardstock and then the top part of it out of that same sparkle teal cardstock. I have my tassel in gold and then I die cut it out of some vellum with gold details as well. Well, sorry, the tassel is yellow and then the vellum that I'm going to layer on top of that yellow is, um, is vellum with some gold details. I really wanted to bring in a lot of shine on this card. So I die cut those twice and I'm layering them together with just some wet glue. 
So my little graduation cap or mortar board is now done. I'm going to glue my diploma. So I cut it out of some yellow cardstock. I originally was going to do white, but since the mug has a pearlescent white shine to it, I wanted to add some contrast. So my diploma is in yellow. I die cut the little ribbon holding my diploma rolled up out of the same teal cardstock. And then the little seal is going to be that same sparkle teal cardstock. So just layering them together, I have a little jewel picker just to help me pick up those small pieces and then a little poker tool on the other side to help with moving things around. So now all of my assembly of my die cut bits are ready to go and I have my hot foiled sentiment. Again, that's out of a pastel satin roll, um, kind of a mint color. I'm going to start layering my little square card together. This square card is four and a quarter by eight and a half and I scored it in half so that way it's four and a quarter by four and a quarter. I'm adding this piece of vellum. It's the same vellum that I used on my shooting star stirring stick and I cut this to be just smaller than four and a quarter by four and a quarter. I think it's like four and an eighth. I wanted just a tiny bit of white to peek around the edge and then using my tape runner again to glue my stenciled background now that it's dry to the center of this card. So my background and my card base are ready to go. We're going to start attaching all of our die cut pieces. So I'm gluing down my mug first as that's the focal point of the card. Just adding glue to the back side of my mug on the shaker and gluing that so the center of the mug is centered to the card. The handle will be kind of off to the side on the right, but I'm going to balance it out by adding in my die cut details. So I know I want my congrats to kind of cover the stirring stick, so I'm adding my graduation cap to the top right of my mug, just kind of overlapping the handle and the shaker window, and then my diploma is getting glued towards the left to balance out the handle of the mug on the other side. I'm adding a little bit of foam adhesive behind my shooting star stirring stick so it has some stability against the card. I don't want to risk it um, getting ripped or torn or bent. My congrats sentiment, I'm going to use that same foam adhesive and I'm going to apply it behind the C as well as the TS on the end of congrats. And then I will use some wet glue towards the center of the sentiment because that's where it will overlap the coffee mug and the stirring stick. And then I'm gonna glue that right above the coffee mug, kind of tucking the C behind the diploma. Um, and it just looks really nice and fits in really well with the rest of the card. I love the yellow and soft blue teal colors of this card. And I absolutely love that you can completely customize your graduation card to be the colors of the school for who you are gifting a graduation card to. I hope you enjoyed this little shaker card and how you can use the mugs to create a shaker card for graduation. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll click like and if you're new here I hope you'll subscribe and come back. As always you can find everything I use down below in the description box. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye!